<laughs> Brenda Anderson knows what it's like to be refused taxi service. She had to send me three cabs in order for me to get home simply because the first two cabs absolutely refused to carry my dog. Anderson says she even told the dispatcher in advance that she has a service dog. The problem is, in order to report a driver who refuses service, you need to record the roof light number on the car, something that can be impossible for people with vision impairments. I am not able to get a roof light number. Fortunately for me, my 11-year-old daughter was with me, and when I asked her to immediately get the number, she was able to get the number and I was able to retain it. Forcing people with vision problems to get that roof number is what the Accessibility Committee wants to change. For a visually impaired person, that doesn't make sense. So what are the other steps that can be taken? Craig says they have a few ideas that can be explored. If the taxi companies know that within the vicinity there might have been five, perhaps five taxi drivers could be um, entered into a discussion with about the need to accommodate people with with seeing eye dogs. Legally, there are only four places off limits to service dogs. The zoo, a restaurant kitchen, the ICU, and a hospital operation room. With these exceptions, the dog can go where the owner goes. Brenda Anderson says despite those rules, people with service dogs are being refused more than just taxis. We're questioned and can be denied access to restaurants, schools, wherever the, wherever the public goes we go, because we are public and we can be denied access. But she says she thinks the committee is moving in the right direction.